we've had a 4.5 magnitude earthquake and swarm near Lake Tahoe, which is north of Long Valley Caldera in California. This is uh, a view from that area of Lassen Peak Volcano. This is uh, one of its light, latest eruptions at 1914, as you can see. That's about 120 miles north of Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe is in Nevada, and uh, most people don't know that we don't, uh, well, the volcanics of the area. The geology of Lake Tahoe. About two million years ago, a shift in tectonic plates caused the Tahoe Basin to drop down between the Sierra Crest to the west and the Carson Range to the east. Volcanic activity also caused by the tectonic shifts led to explosion the expulsion of magma up through the faults, filling in gaps and damming the valleys. This is according to North Lake Tahoe, go to um, go Tahoe North. Now, 10,000 years ago, at the time of the last ice age, individual glaciers formed in the area's highest elevations on the north, west, and south ends of the lake. Movement by the glaciers scorched, scoured in the basins and formed Donner Lake, Emerald Bay, and Lake Tahoe, and Fallen Leaf Lake, which sits up and to the west of Lake Tahoe. Today, erosion and weathering is causing a slow, undetectable lowering of the Sierra, the mountain range that houses uh, Lake Tahoe, and it's believed Lake Tahoe is filling in with sediment at a rate of a foot every year, every, sorry, 3,200 years, so in about 3 million some odd years, the lake will be replaced by a meadow. And here we have a picture of Mount Shasta, which is uh, even more north than Lassen Peak. But uh, they look the same. And they're all, they are the high threat volcanoes of the area, of course. And here we are. This is our location. Uh, I pinned it on... Uh, Google Earth, so you can see it much clearer. This is Lake Tahoe. Uh, this is Long Valley Caldera. And if we measure the miles from that position, we have about 104 miles to Long Valley Caldera Supervolcano. And we have about 130 miles to Lassen Peak. But um, we have to keep in mind that we had an earthquake swarm in Utah, yesterday, Salt Lake City, Utah, right here. And uh, thank goodness they've stopped. But they were big. The 5.7 was big that hit here, and we had a, a swarm. Um, and we also talked about the fact that this area here is volcanic, that Utah has eight volcanoes, and that the magma plume, the mantle plume comes right from Baja, California, right here, feeding that line straight up to Yellowstone. That's the eastern part of the branch of the mantle plume, and the western branch goes up this way, right along the Walker Lane fault system, and all to the, all the high threat volcanoes that we see here, the high threat volcanoes being Long Valley, and Lassen Peak, Mount Shasta, okay, Clear Lake is right here as well. And um, so we see that we have activity Utah, the mantle plume fed by Baja, splitting into the east and the west. And now we have this thing here, 4.5. Oops, 4.5 in the swarm. What happened? Our globe came off. OK, sorry about that. OK, let's put it back in place. Okay, and let's go back to our maps. This is our swarm. The big one was 4.5. And as you can see, all the blue are today's quake, and the, the red are the past hour. Lake Tahoe right there, uh, just off the border into Nevada. And 1.5. Carson City right there, 1.6. And how many people felt it? Let's see. The reports to USGS, 5,349 reported to USGS, 
And those are, of course, not all the people have felt it, but a lot more have felt it. And going to the shaking. This is the shaking area. And as you can see, it stops there. But if you extrapolate the shaking, it goes into a much further areas, obviously. Areas going into our, uh, right here, into Lassen Peak and Long Valley. Let's go to get our, our similar map so you can see the shaking. Okay. There we go. That's it. And if we go back to our map, we see that uh, the shaking goes. That's uh, Mono Lake. That's Long Valley Caldera. That's Mono Lake. That's Long Valley Caldera. That's Mono Lake. That's Long Valley Caldera. So you can see the shaking went all the way up to Long Valley. And of course, because of the fact that it's almost the same distance, it shook Lassen Peak as well, I would, I would venture to say. Lassen Peak, right here. Lassen Peak. And going back to our map. Okay, so it shook Lassen Peak and it shook Long Valley Caldera. Extrapolate the lines. It's, it's even over them. But it's just that the fact, I don't know why they keep stopping the block right there. But uh, obviously it shook a lot more than what the block is telling us. Okay. Um, five and a half some odd people felt it. We know that this is the Walker Lane fault system. Um, there we go. Okay. This is uh, San Andreas. This is the, the Hayward Fault meeting at uh, Pinnacle Salinas right there. This is the Garlic Fault. This is Ridgecrest right there. And this is the Walker Lane Fault System. You can see all the hundreds of faults that make it up. And um, I, it's not just that we had the uh, Salt Lake City 5.7 and the and the uh, rest of the swarm here as we had yesterday let's pull it out so we can see a lot more okay there we go oh we had more today okay we had more okay we had more we have more swarms there i thought it, i thought it had it finished but i guess it picked up again there, look at that hundreds of quakes in two days Hundreds of quakes, look at that. Okay, these are small, obviously. But they're in an area of shaking. 64 reported that one. They're in an area of liquefaction. That's an area that uh, is filled in, but it's got sediment and uh, salt. And it's basically a valley to the west of the mountains. And as you can see, there's lakes there, lakes everywhere there, lakes up back over here, lakes over here. And it's very soft, Salt Lake City. Um, buildings uh, have been uh, having some damage. The uh, Latter-day Saints Temple, the Mormon Temple, has had damage to the spire and the statue. There were reports of uh, over 2.5 million having felt the shaking because it was big, it was 5.7. And all these... Uh, if you want to count them, there must be hundreds there. Okay, and they're still shaking. I thought that, that when I saw it a couple of hours ago, I didn't see that much. Um, okay, so as we said before, okay, we have uh, Yellowstone as well being affected, but they're small, thank goodness. And, um, okay, but they say that uh, it's not the matter of strength, it's a matter of frequency of the... Uh, quantity of them. As we said before, this is the Baja mantle plume from here and it splits into two. The west goes to the high threat volcanoes right here and the east goes through this line here, right through Salt Lake, right through Utah and uh, into Yellowstone. And of course we said yesterday as we went into the geology of Utah, there are eight volcanoes there 
Let's go back to our volcanoes. The Utah volcanoes, eight volcanoes of Utah, says volcano discovery. And um, I think it was, was it Black Rock that uh, last erupted 660 years ago? Yeah, okay, Black Rock, the eastern margin of the Great Basin, the youngest volcanic area in Utah contains both Utah's youngest known rhyolite dome and its youngest lava flow, the roughly 660-year-old Ice Springs lava flow, located at um, Ice Springs, of course. Okay, so what? About the year 1300, there was a, a, a volcanic eruption there. That's the youngest of them. And the other one was, I think, a couple of thousand years back. This one here. Um, Bald Knoll produced massive, youthful lava traveling about 12 kilometers, as we see there. So they're all pretty young, but uh, uh, 660 was the latest, the most uh, recent. Okay, so we have that line from Baja, as you can see right here, going into Yellowstone, which is right here, right there. And that's a Great Salt Lake. And so we've had this big one there, Lake Tahoe 4.5. But we, if we go to Canada, the Canadian map, we'll see that we've had a, a, a quite a few um, quakes today north of Vancouver and on the Cascadia right there. And uh, we shouldn't be surprised because whenever we have Vancouver and Cascadia quakes, they do hit uh, the area of the Walker Lane Fault System. We saw that the last time they had the 6.2 on July 3rd, we saw that it hit into Ridgecrest with a foreshock of 6.4. That was a foreshock to the main shock of 7.1 on July 5th. And the last time it had 6.2 was uh, 2015, when uh, it, again it gave a moderate size earthquake back in Ridgecrest 24 hours later. Whereas this one here, July of 2019, was 13 hours later. So every time we, I, I've noticed that every time we have an earthquake, Bella Bella Canada, uh, Canada Port uh, Arthur around there, it somehow um, hits here, Ridgecrest and Walker Lane Fault System. Okay, so uh, how much is that? That's a, that's a small one. But you can see we have more of them, Indian Hills, Nevada. This is exactly where we have Lake Tahoe. So you have to be careful because a 4.5 is uh, in the area in between, as we said, the um, Long Valley Caldera and Lassen Peak, and they, they both shook. They both shook, as we saw, from the shaking. There we go. That's Lassen Peak, and that's Long Valley Caldera, Mono Lake, Long Valley. If you extrapolate them, you can see all the lines. I didn't even put all of them in. I didn't put all of them in. Okay. Um, you can extrapolate the lines. You can see that they take up uh, both volcanoes, Lassen Peak and Long Valley Caldera, were shaken as well. So please be careful, all of you there on the West Coast and in Utah. I know I have a viewer from Utah as well that uh, can see the um, temple spiral from her window, from I think what she said. So please be very careful. And um, I'll leave links below for you for this. Thank you for your support. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse 
and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.